Okay, this video is gonna go over how to remove the bottom cover of your Avalon to replace the fuse or to replace the VCA IC. Also, we're gonna go over how to remove the PCB assembly stack from the entire enclosure, including the top panel, to access the panel board. For instance, to replace the resonance pot. And then furthermore, I'll cover how to separate the main board and panel board assemblies in case you need to do further work on the unit. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip the unit over and take off the bottom panel by removing the six Phillips pan head screws. Ideally, you're gonna to wanna to use a number two Phillips JIS, Japan Industrial Standard screwdriver. If you don't have a JIS, use a standard Phillips number two. Once you remove the six screws, reach underneath and remove the bottom cover. You can see the cover here, and you can place it aside. Now you have access to the VCA I see here, and the fuse here. Now in some cases, when we get a customer service request, there may be a high likelihood that the VCA I see is bad, and we may send a replacement to you instead of having you send the entire unit in for repair. Likewise, if we suspect the fuse, we may send a fuse to replace the fuse cartridge here. Okay, so other than the location of the mounting screws, the Revision A unit will be identical. However, on the majority of Revision A Avalons, the VCAIC and the fuse are not accessible from the bottom of the unit. The PCB stack will have to be taken apart as described later in the video. What we're gonna do now is remove the entire electronics assembly from the enclosure. Okay, so you're gonna need a 5.5 millimeter or 732 inch nut driver. I'll put the part number for this in the description. Ideally, you want a low profile driver as it makes it easier to reach in the tight areas. So we're gonna go in here, one, two, three nuts in the case of the Rev B and forward units. In the case of the Rev A units, if the panel board underneath is blue, there is only two mounting nuts at the bottom left and bottom right sides. So once you get those removed, flip the unit back over, and now you're gonna wanna remove all the knobs. They just pull off and put those aside. Next, remove the caps from the rotary switches. They have collet knobs. Now for the 16 panel nuts, they require a slotted spanner. I'm gonna put the part number of the spanner in the description in case you don't have a proper tool on hand. In most cases, these panel nuts will be somewhat loose and may be fairly easy to remove if you don't have the proper tool. But just be careful if you don't have the proper spanner tool and you don't buy the one that's recommended. Okay, next you're going to need to remove the two collet knobs. You're going to need a M10 nut driver. Ideally, you're going to need a low profile driver so that it fits within the confines of the knob here. We use this WIA M10 model number 372 driver. I'll put the part number for this in the description as well. Now that we have that off, and we have also removed the two or three nuts from the bottom, press down on the unit and remove the top panel. Now you have the top panel here. You can see the mounting studs on the insides. Put that aside carefully. 
Now you have the entire electronics assembly here. You're going to find that when you took apart the electronics assembly, the PCB stack, from the enclosure, there are some washers that came out. In most cases there are six washers. In the case of the Blue Revision A, you're going to find just four washers. The washers will be flat washers, and in some cases, shoulder washers. In some cases, they will be fiber washers, in other cases, stainless steel. In the case that you have stainless steel washers, you're going to want to place one each on the two or three studs first. Then you're going to line up the assembly and place it back on. And then once you get it in, you're going to put the other washer on the back side, followed by the nut. And also on the left side, this ground strap needs to be put on the stud before the nut goes on. In the case you have fiber washers, which will generally be on revision C and forward units, you may have shoulder washers as well. If you have shoulder washers, they go on last. So the flat washers go on the studs first, then the assembly is placed on, then the shoulder washers are placed on the other side, shoulder side down, followed by the nuts. And of course before the nut, the ground strap on the left side. Okay, now I'm going to describe how to remove and replace the resonance pot without disassembling the whole PCB stack. You're going to cut the legs, remove the pot, and then replace it from the top. First remove the screw just below the resonance pot. I've already done it here. It may be a Phillips or a T10 Twerk screw. This will give you more room to work. So you're going to go in and cut each leg individually. Okay. Then you're going to go in and remove the main mounting legs. Lift it out like this. Then you're going to reach under and heat the other leg and pull it out. Then you can go back in and remove the legs. Make sure not to push the legs down into the machine as it could short into another leg or fall into the machine and short something out. Now you can go in with your removal tool, either your desoldering tool or your pump, and remove the solder from the holes. Then you can get in there with your isopropyl and clean it up. Okay, you're just going to push in the new pot. You're not going to solder the right main leg, it's not necessary. going to 
solder it in from the top. Solder the left side mounting leg. Then clean it up. Then you've got a new resonance pot. Put the screw back in, put everything back the way it was disassembled, and you're good to go. Now if you want to take the PCB stack apart, you'll need to remove the three Phillips pan head screws on the back here. Remove these two panel nuts here for the phone jacks. Then you can remove this back piece here. Then you'll need an M12 deep socket to remove these two here. Then you'll want to pull and loosen the latch here that holds the flex cable in. Okay, and then you have it separated. Okay, turn the unit over, and on the bottom there are 12 T10 torque screws that need to be removed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. You do not need to remove these two here because they are to hold in the cartridge slot cover. Once you have those removed, you'll be able to pull the two boards apart. Now there are several connectors holding these two boards together. You can see those gold pin headers inside there. You want to sort of loosen one side. And then the other and then you'll be able to separate them. But don't pull it all the way apart just yet. Then you're gonna have this flex cable in here. Right in here, this flex cable you're gonna need to pull out. And then there's two more cables. There's this one, which you'll want to loosen the latch and then pull it out. And then this four position cable here, which you can pull out from either side. Now you have the panel board separate from the main board to work on. And then you reassemble it in the reverse order. So when you put it back together, you can see all the pin headers that need to connect. So you'll first need to connect this cable. It's keyed so it'll only go in one way. Then you'll need to set it upright like this. And connect this cable. Conductive material is facing this way, away from the panel board. And then tighten the compression latch. And then you'll place the panel board lightly over the top of the main board. Turn it around. And then you're going to go in here and plug back in this other flex cable under here. And then you're going to address the four position cable 
around that standoff right there. And then you're going to look and line up those pins and carefully place it back together. I like to start on this side here and then sort of turn it over, peek inside, make sure this one in the front here is lined up. There it is. And then once I'm sure I can push it all back together. Then I'll check it and make sure it's all lined up. And then you'll be ready to put the rest of the unit back together in the reverse order.